the next stop on the tour was actually Seed Studios. Their kind of origin story speaks a lot about why they're different to a lot of the other factories we've visited. Seed is essentially a manufacturer for, for hardware. Seed is a really interesting company. It's Chinese native and it, it's very similar to what we would consider to be something like a Western tech startup or the impression you get when you walk in the door is almost like an advertising agency. Or, or Google or, or YouTube or something like that. Like it was, it had that kind of vibe to it. It feels like a place that is buzzing with new ideas. Walking into the Seed Studios, like you, it didn't feel like any of the other factories. It was much more hipster. I feel like I could get like a mocha latte. Like the whole thing was architecturally designed. It was beautiful. A little bit of a racetrack around the floor and there's ping, you, know, you walk in the office and there's ping pong tables. There's the maker robot and it's all a bit freewheeling. On the walls, they had their old boards and then placed it on a grid section. Like it was really beautifully artistically done. Of all the firms we visited, Seed uh, understands the maker community more than any other. In fact, it, it, the whole business has been built around the maker community. Is actually a global player when it comes to the open source hardware innovation ecosystem. Seed is a really good example of a company that's grown out of the maker movement. Seed Studios kind of brought the makers fair to Shenzhen and they kind of brought the makers movement from America to Shenzhen as well. They have built this whole identity around themselves of being the incubator of ideas and that also reflects in things like their involvement in maker fair, the fact that they worked with make to bring the maker fair to Shenzhen and they they also run their own little hacker space. I was particularly interested in looking at their, their maker space, the X Factory. They're much more maker focused, so kind of more, and they want to make things for makers. The first touch point for us was that Eric Pan opened the Maker Fair, the opening ceremony. When we got to the Makers Fair earlier in the week, Seed Studios had a massive booth right out the side because they're a major sponsor. One of the things that I heard Eric Pan say while we were on the tour was that these days it should be about innovating with China, not just made in China, and Seed is very much contributing to that. It's, it's a full ecosystem and we're sitting in the middle to try to become a router to make it more smooth. So the visit to Seed Studios was certainly something I was very keen to, to do because uh, being in the Hacker and a maker. Seed Studios plays a large part. They've been making Arduino and uh, other uh, open source related hardware for a long time. Because the uh, the founders of Seed and Eric Pan in particular were very involved in the local maker movement around Shenzhen, they wanted to be able to, be able to manufacture their own projects. We starting from my previous experience as a maker. Seed Studio starts from providing the open source modules, and then some makers ask us, "Can you do manufacturing? Can you help us to make my stuff? Since you are in Shenzhen, you have the supply." Chains. We say why not? We want to help you guys. So we provide some service and uh, now we are standardizing it, making it more efficient to make it more complete. Seed had a big focus on getting your product out there and being able to have your product prototyped and then even eventually manufactured in their own factory. It's just, it just felt like the complete package. So it was that ethos of creativity that then led them to create the company and now they are providing those similar services back to other makers. So they are being the factory to the maker. So they're much more focused on kind of Arduino boards and accessories for the Arduino board. So they're trying to empower hobbyists or people who want to make something to kind of prototype rapidly. Because Seed really originated within that uh, that make it culture and the, the hacker sort of approach to things, they are creating a lot of their own products. They're coming up with new ideas. So they manufacture maker kits for any DIY or doing some projects. You can actually buy some from Seed Studio. So Seed Studios has a whole bunch of shields that they make and manufacture. And they work on ideas for new products, release them as open hardware. But many you know, the Grove boards, for example. That's kind of Best like the big right. hub where you can connect a bunch of parts together yep. and build the system really quickly and easily. In fact, our product actually, we bought a kit from them to do our prototype. It's very difficult to get all the technologies. It's uh, your individual. You cannot bargain with big companies to get their help. And also, it's very difficult to bring your prototypes into manufacture for shipping. So what we are trying to do is to around this three factor of needs and build a platform so they can get open source hardware easily to build their prototype. And we provide agile manufacturing service so they can compile their prototype into engineering samples of small batch manufacturers. And we also connect to traditional industries to sell their creations to the uh, end customer. They're very visible. They're a very public facing company. So we were Seed Studios customer. So yeah, it was good to see where the kits are made. And they're really focusing on STEM. So they're working on a lot of new products and coming up with designs to cater to the education sector. Seed has found a niche 
for itself in helping companies get their product into the hands of makers. So they, they make development boards really accessible for lots of makers, have really helped connect large manuf manufacturers like Intel with the maker community. Like uh, Microsoft and like Intel. And we work with uh, startups, makers like uh, uh, Piper, like Outboy, like uh, CrazyFly, all kinds of uh, startup companies. We keep digging from technology providers to get their stuff into standardized open source module to global makers. The other neat thing about visiting Seed Studios was to see their production line. They do a lot of manufacturing themselves and do the manufacturing in-house. And Seed Studios is a much smaller scale manufacturer and actually a manufacturer that many on the tour had previously engaged with and, and, and had components and, and, and the like delivered from them. I know some of the people on the tour have had boards made at uh, Seed Studios, so it was great to visit the factory and, and learn more about the organization. They've progressed where you can basically have your own designs made at seed and not just electronics but they can do the whole packaging. But not only did they make their own intellectual property but they also made every other people's intellectual property. We provide factoring services with the supply chain centre and other places. They primarily do PCB creation and assembly. You can upload your Gerber files which is the plan of the PCB and get say 10 copies of something or for like five dollars US or something super cheap. So for a maker it's an interface to easily go from one piece to several thousands or even more. We work now more with traditional industries to portal their needs towards the maker companies. So that's where we help them to promote their creation. So that allows their customers who buy boards from them to have access to facilities and tools to work on their own projects. And if those projects then become successful, they might turn into products and then Seed gets to manufacture them. We don't have actually a limit for the quantities, but we focus the growth. If we work with uh, uh, the makers, how could we help them to have their prototypes easily? And how do, can we prepare for the supply chains for the future growth? We are not the only company doing the own manufacture. We have the, the factory to be, to provide the fast prototyping, but we also work with the, the supply chains all over Shenzhen to make it happen. Seed have their own manufacturing facilities. They actually have their own little factory. One of the surprising things about it is how physically small it is and how many different product lines and the volume that they can run through in such a small space. The Seed factory that we went to when we got all dressed up and went back into another production line is definitely smaller than a lot of the other factories we've seen like HLH. The Seed manufacturing plant is not what you generally expect some massive tilt slab factory. No less professional, definitely. Good processes in place, good manufacturing technologies as well. And what was interesting about Seed is whilst it has the same equipment, so you basically got your solder paste and your pick and place and your wave soldering and inspection. It was very, very compact. The line was quite quite small and neat and then there was another room where people were, were packaging things up, putting things into boxes and packages and getting them ready to ship out. And that was kind of part of their manufacturing that was going on at Seed Studio, so it was much like smaller space. The production quantity that they can produce is still enormous given the space that they have. It was one floor in this building and they just, they had the SMT line fed straight into the selective soldering setup, all the pick and play stuff obviously, and then they'd reconfigure that very quickly. So they're, they're not doing big production runs, but they had everything ready to go so when they finished making one type of board, they could reconfigure the machine very quickly to go and make the next time. So they're doing short runs. They did the whole the whole thing there. They did the, even the packing and a lot of the design was done there too. And they also do a lot of projects in Kickstarter. They have their own products too. One of the things that, that struck me straight away is they have a, a dashboard on the factory floor to track how things are going. It looked like a big touchscreen TV. They'd list all their production rates and quotas and how much of their production quota they'd achieved for that month. They've obviously gone to a lot of work to optimise it. So when we walked in to have a tour of the factory, there was a big screen on the end showing a list of all of the boards that were in the queue for assembly. How many of them are making? What they, when they have to finish and how many minutes they have spent on that product and whether that's delayed or whether that's on time, which is quite impressive. Whether parts are, are waiting to, to be uh, delivered or something of that sort. And it went down off the screen. It was a big 42 inch screen. And you could recognize how the names of them. So I think I saw the bus part V4 being, was on, on, the, on their schedule to be made. So we could see, for example, that they had 50 of this board that was due for production tomorrow. And there are hundred of this particular board that's due for production. So they've got a complete snapshot view of what's happening on the floor at any given point. That's very professional and very well organized. It's a very efficient workplace. It was really hands-on. It still had, you know, some of the same componentry that we'd seen before, the pick and play soldering things like that but it was it was condensed. So what they're doing is running fairly small batches through but they're doing it in a very efficient way and what that allows them to do in a really small factory space is get maximum use out of the machines and it allows them to support 
a quite a broad product range but with fairly small volume in each machine. And all of their own internal packaging as well, so they'd get the packaging printed, brought in and then all the packaging machines were right there. They can just produce that for you really quickly and get all, all of it put together really nice and, nice and fast so you can see your project. Because they're right in the middle of the city which is all about manufacturing, one of the clever things I saw was that they had repurposed lolly packaging machines for electronic parts. So typically if you have a kit of parts that you want to distribute to a customer, you have to count out the number of parts and put them in a bag and seal it up. But of course in lolly factories their whole job is rapidly packing packaging up little bags of things. So they had two lolly packaging machines sitting in this electronics assembly factory, now feeding parts into them and bagging them up as if they were lollies. So it comes straight off the line, get tested, packaged, and then they had the, the warehouse. So in one tiny little factory, they could make everything from little baby Arduinos and then all the little sensor boards and things. One thing we saw at Seed, in fact we saw at every single factory we went to, was test jigs. It was quite impressive to see the inventory of testing equipment they had there. So they, and they could just basically go and get whichever jig they needed for whichever product they were making. You might have the idea that in an electronics assembly factory you run circuit boards through and you'll test a few of them occasionally, like just do a statistical analysis. But the reality was that every single production line we saw, they tested every single board that came off the line. You still had all the same components which made the, you know, the manufacturing, you know, high quality, like good quality. You had the, the testing that came off of it. It was just, you know, there was, instead of it being an automated robot hand, like the board would come off, a guy kind of would sit there, he'd plug in to a computer, he'd look and see if it would work. If it was working, he'd pass it on. If not, he'd grab the soldering iron, fix it, and then he'd pass it on. That's the reality today. There, I don't think there are really any factories around that just do you know, do the old way of run the boards through and hope they work. Everybody now has test jigs that run automated tests, so the boards go into the machine and they check for functionality before they're shipped. One of the difficulties for surface mount assembly and electronics factories is that customers might come to them with designs that use any one of a very wide variety of parts and so they have to set up their manufacturing to suit the requirements of the customer. And one of the things that they've done is take manufacturing best practice and introduce that to makers. What Seed has done is uh, I think a very good initiative. They've come up with a thing called the OPL which is the Open Parts Library. The Common Parts Library is, uh, is a very imp important key for small bench manufacturer. Because you see, no matter it's a large quantity or small quantity, you need to talk with all the suppliers to have all the components ready to manufacture. So we are collecting the needs from different makers and convert that into the most frequent used com common parts library. For me personally, I guess the, the OPL library basically means that you can leverage off the efforts and designs of other people. So you know, we cannot be all of the experts in every area. And so I know someone's put, uh, put a lot of time and attention to making a, a great design you can now build that as part of your own basically save uh, saves time allows you to do things you may not have been otherwise able to do having access to that open parts library and being able to prototype really quickly i think the speed because you don't want too long between you clicking the go button and then your product being shipped to your door because that that's just a another step in, it, it kind of delays your, your project. It means it's not as quick to get your prototype out there. And essentially it's like a blessed list of parts. So if you design your project using parts from that list, it means that they already have them on hand. Their machines have already run these parts through before so they know that they're gonna get good yields from it. There are no supply issues. And I think it's a really good idea. Seed's uh, archive of open parts is a, is a great idea because uh, it's basically a form of standardization and standardization helps everyone. It allows you to keep a small amount of stock, uh, there's less likelihood of mistakes because of layout or things being incorrectly marked or just pieces that won't fit together. And so yeah, anything that's open and standardised increases efficiency, reduces risk and cost and it's got to be a good thing. If you restrict the parts that are used in your design to just the OPL parts, you can send your design off to seed and you know that you'll get it back within a certain time. What it does is remove a whole lot of the unknowns. If you have some unusual part in your design, it might have a long lead time. So all of a sudden, instead of being able to turn your boards around in four days, it might take four weeks but by using the OPL it makes everything predictable. And I think having a focus like that is really really essential for having going from the idea in your head to an actual product. So what they're trying to do is foster the entire ecosystem around their customers not simply be a factory. This studio starts in two people like in 2008 like uh, we're doing everything ourselves but now we're structuring the company because it's 200 and 40 people now. I don't want the size to be to grow tremendously. I think it's about the efficiency, it's about the leverage we apply. The maker movement is the root. They are the source for the innovations and for 
or pot potential business models as well. The fruit lies in traditional industries. How we can help makers go into industries like STEAM education, like IoT buildings, agriculture, transportation, and uh, etc. Every product of seed, we have a tank, it's called Innovate with China. It's not a matter of made in China or made in Australia or made in the United States. I think we are facing a new era that makers are uniting to create more important and uh, aging products than could be the future. So we are very proud and uh, we come. <laughs>